Hello, folks. This is Jordan Sheridan with Jordan Sheridan. Uh, as you can see, I'm uh, slightly disheveled. Uh, if I'm being honest, it is 1.15 in the afternoon, and I have not showered yet. Uh, give me some benefit of the doubt, because I uh, had surgery on Thursday on my lower back. Um, if you didn't know, uh, to be brief, I uh, had lower back problems for a few years, and uh, it just progressively got worse, uh, especially traveling as much as I was. And I got an MRI like two weeks ago, and the MRI showed that I had a really large herniated disc that was pressing into my sciatic nerve, and a piece of that disc had broke off, and it was lodged in my spinal column. So that's not positive. So they took out that disc fragment. It, I posted it on my Facebook, which is probably dumb of me. Uh, it kind of looks like a really long piece of chicken. It was very gross. Anyway, went to the doctor this morning. Uh, healing is going well. Starting physical therapy on Thursday. Uh, and physical therapy will be like six to eight weeks. But I will be reporting during those six to eight weeks, as well as um, starting to build up uh, in efforts to launch a company. If you've seen some of my uh, previous videos on this YouTube channel, which by the way, I'm not bragging at all because it's really thanks to you. But like, damn, this YouTube channel is growing quick. I think I launched it last week. We're at 6,559 6, subscribers. And this thing went up last week. I mean, it shows not because people want me so much, but they really, really want the reporting on stories that no one else is covering. I'm not gonna compare the subscriber growth to other channels, but let's just say we're growing uh, equal to, if not faster than other channels. And I haven't done videos in a few days. So thank you for that. Uh, I will be doing physical therapy, like I said, but also reporting over the next few weeks. Wanted to give you a few updates uh, so you know what's going on with me. Uh, you know some things that are coming up. Uh, I also wanted to talk about Truth Against the Machine because I've gotten some comments, questions. I actually briefly addressed it uh, in a separate video, but I wanted to address it further. Uh, so there's no questions um, and everybody knows what's going on. Why, you know, the who, what, where, why, and when. So uh, I've ended Truth Against the Machine. Uh, the small dollar donors, uh, your payments have stopped, I believe, a month ago. Um, thanks to Jen, my business partner. Uh, she's done a lot of that stuff, so you're not being charged anymore. Uh, a lot of the uh, reporters, uh, several of the reporters who were reporting for Truth Against the Machine now have their own pages, so maybe I'll start blasting that out on my page. Uh, so Teresa Joy, Mar Marcus Early, Marcus Ely, uh, Sam Oser, uh, so they're doing reporting on their own channels. I, I'm still in touch with them. Uh, great relationships. So here's here's basically Truth Against the Machine in a nutshell. Um, I actually, when I launched Truth Against the Machine, it was around this time last year, actually. Um, I was still at the Young Turks. And honestly, we're, uh, my time at the Young Turks, I, I literally was kind of working every day for two years and many, many hours. Um, I, I launched Truth Against the Machine really, in my mind, I was never really going to be that involved. I was never going to be the face of it because I had every intention uh, of being a TYT for, for a long time, um, you know, growing as a reporter and, you know, maybe launching my own uh, network one day. But Truth Against the Machine was really, to me, uh, more of a, I, I, I guess you could say an experiment to try and cultivate, grow uh, non-traditional journalists, people that didn't, you know, have a journalism degree or have years at CNN under their belt or whatever, try to take people like me. Like I had journalism experience before, but I wasn't like, I didn't have 10 years of experience. I thought I had talent. I was, I was, had a drive and persistence and I wanted to basically give an opportunity for people like that, um, to elevate their uh, their voice and their reporting and their drive. I actually got the idea of a truth against the machine when I was at Standing Rock because there was very little like national media there, but there was a lot of freelance media like documentary filmmakers, photographers, 
you know, Facebook live streamers. There was a lot of those. And I thought to myself, wow, you have all these people who are kind of uh, going on their own on their Facebooks with pretty much small audiences. What if I could kind of help cultivate and create like a central hub for these kinds of journalists? So that was a thought uh, behind it. I, I never thought, honestly, that I was going to be the face of it. Uh, I really just thought I'd, I'd have a background role uh, in terms of mentoring people and this and that. And if I'm being honest, uh, a little behind the scenes, there were some, a lot of folks there who were frustrated because I wasn't really that involved. They were, I wasn't responding to their texts. I wasn't, um, I wasn't mentoring them because frankly, I didn't have the time to do that. You know, it's very difficult when you're going through documents all day or calling sources in Flint and elsewhere and doing two or three videos a day and trying to go to the bathroom and having a life uh, to then like be the figurehead of a company. Uh, it, it actually was a not prof non-profit, not a company. So I wasn't able to be involved. And honestly, it just wasn't my intention to be involved. I wanted to bring in people um, and, you know, from the background, be, be a mentor. Uh, I ended it because number one, uh, to me, again, uh, you know, obviously uh, plans changed. I wasn't expecting uh, that to be at TYT. I wasn't expecting to launch my own thing. I wasn't expecting to kind of be the face of, an, of anything, and which is ultimately my new network. I will have other people uh, with me. But to me, Tatum, the original... Uh, the, the, the original idea for it was more for me to be in the background and to cultivate other people uh, around me that might not have journalism experience. Uh, whereas what I'm building now in the background, by the way, I'll leave you in suspense. We do have a name for the company that will be revealed at a later date. It's a badass name. I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to be excited. But uh, this new company, to tell you the truth, keeping it real, uh, I don't, I don't have time in this new company, this new network, this media revolution to be a mentor to, to many, many people. I don't. I have the, the, the levels of corruption in this country, the level of stories that need to be covered. It's going to take an army. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't train that army as I go. So that was one reason I wanted to create uh, something new. Uh, another reason was part of what I've always had an interest in. Let me give you a little behind the scenes the last few weeks. Uh, you know, I've met for lunch, for a drink with a lot of different people, some of them in media, some of them East Coast media types. And I've told them what my idea is, which is a very, very uh, large in the field operation, uh, disappearing middle class type reporting from interviewing, you know, single mothers struggling in a Walmart parking lot to going into streets in Detroit, to Flint, to East Chicago, to, to all over the country. And not just me, other people. And they said, oh, that's such a nice, that's such a nice concept. Oh, brownie points for you. That's, that's very noble. But you're never actually going to like make a business out of that. You're never going to actually like, that's not a business model. You can't make money off of that. Uh, and I told them, you're wrong. You're wrong. You can. And frankly, uh, TYT's audience proved that by uh, donating $2 million uh, to TYT um, because they wanted more of that kind of reporting. It wasn't because they wanted more of me and my disheveled face in my parents' kitchen where I am right now. Uh, they wanted more people in Standing Rock and these other stories, whether it was me or anyone else, didn't really matter. So to me, it's very important that not only because it, I feel it's ethically right uh, and morally right to do this kind of reporting in a sea of sensationalized nonsense, but also I want to show that this can be a successful business model. With that, I wanted to launch a for-profit company. Tatum was a non-profit organization. So that it's really that simple. There's no uh, sinister evilness. There's no financial corruption, none of that. It's because Tatum, I, I was never going to be the figurehead of Tatum. And it really was meant as kind of an experimental ground to mentor and cultivate new people and bring up new journalists. Whereas the for-profit company, yeah, you know, we might have uh, people down the line join us as reporters that don't have 10 years of journalism experience, that don't uh, have all that, and that's fine. But it, the intention of it isn't really to train new people to become journalists. Um, 
I'm very open to people with different experiences, uh, not like journalists, but keeping it real, it's not going to be, you know, uh, me or other people on the ground, you know, 16 hours a day doing reporting and then training people at night. Uh, there's just, unfortunately, there's no time for that. So I also wanted to make clear because I've seen some comments and, and I, I don't, um, I have no problem with it. You, you want to, you want transparency and you deserve it. So some people have said and asked, you know, well, where did the money go? And yada, yada, yada. Uh, contrary to what some other people said, we actually paid a lot of the uh, reporters we had with that money. Um, I think at some point, at one point, I think Tatum had like 20 to 25 volunteers. Uh, we have, did not pay, you know, uh, this, they were paid as volunteers. They weren't paid as like full-time anything because we didn't have the money for that, but, uh, paid out on a, as, as regularly as we can reporters, uh, video editors, uh, the, uh, the top editor, our, our marketer. Uh, so really that's, there's, there's nothing more, there's no, nothing sinister that that's where the money went. Uh, secondly, some people have said, well, what about you, Jordan? You're subscribe, you know, you're asking people to subscribe to your Patreon. Uh, you're asking, you know, you're, you're acting like you have no money, blah, 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 blah. What do you, what, what do you got under your pillow? Well, first of all, do you not see that I'm in my parents' kitchen right now? <laughs> so, uh, for, for legal reasons, I can't really get into, uh, my wallet, uh, in terms of any thing that I, I recently, uh, might have any funds that I recently might have, uh, earned. Uh, I can't get into for legal reasons. There's really nothing more I could say legally. It's not because I'm trying to be shady. It's just, I can't say anything. I can't talk about certain funds that might have, might have come my way or any of that. But I can tell you this, um, if, for, for those that are like, oh, you know, Jordan's a billionaire and he got all of his money. No, not, not the case. I promise. And if you'd like to ask Jen, who's in the comments here, uh, because she's my business partner. If, if I'm rolling in it, she could she could comment on that. Um, secondly, I have nothing to hide, so I'm going to be tra as transparent as humanly possible. You, right now, you could go to my Patreon page. It's patreoncom slash I have 347 patrons, uh, and per chapter, right now, per chapter, pledged uh, $1,397. So basically $1,400 uh, pledged per Patreon, uh, per chapter from th 347 patrons, uh, which is great. I, I want to keep growing it, not only because like I have rent to pay and have to live, but I'm trying to show that this is a business model, real reporting, uh, doing not only like videos from my kitchen, which for the time being is what I'll be doing because I just had back surgery, but the reporting in the field. Uh, there will also be other things other than video. I don't want to get into the whole uh, launch idea, but I have other plans than just video. I have a lot of plans, um, very devious plans. Uh, so totally fine if you want to know like where money went, how much I have right now. Like I'm not going to empty my wallet for you. But that's, you could go to my Patreon right now. That's how much uh, is pledged right now. I hope to grow the page. Uh, like people like Jimmy Dore, I think, have like over 3,000 patrons. Kyle Kalinske has great patrons. I consider myself, uh, you know, humbled to even be thought of in the category with those uh, folks. I love uh, Jimmy's coverage. I love Kyle's coverage. Um, there's other, like, uh, there's other uh independent media commentators, commentators, reporters, whatever you want to call them, that are doing great stuff. So honestly, I mean, the bottom line is this. I am writing a book. I'm going to be launching something next week that's different than the book. Uh, and I've said it from, uh, I keep it real, you know, we need to walk the walk as a collective progressive movement. Because uh, if we want to crap on the corporate media, that's fine. I love doing it. I do it pretty much all day on Twitter. <laughs> that's, that's my life right now. But we also have to help support uh, the journalism we want to see. And I don't look at it as a charity. I don't look at it as donations. We're not donating to like, um, you know, Salvation Army, which by the way, is, there's some corruption there too. Maybe I'll do that one day. Uh, we, you know, we are paying for a product. We are paying for real journalism. But I want to make something very, very clear. Um, I don't need to be a multimillionaire. And you, and you save this video. 
to call me out as a hypocrite one day. But I, that's not my interest. And if, if you've been friends with me, if you know me, like I'm not some big spender, contrary to uh, some suggestions or claims that have been made. I'm actually pretty frugal. I'm actually one of the, uh, I don't want to say cheap, but uh, I, I do uh, watch my money. I certainly watch other people's money. Um, I mean, I won't get into examples, but I, I, I am not looking to be a multi-billion dollar media uh, plutocrat. If I was, I probably would have accepted two job offers I got during the campaign outside of TYT for a lot more money. I got two job offers uh, from July to October of 2016. One of them for double what I was making at TYT, but I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror if I would, would have went to that outlet. So uh, I also want to talk about um, transparency going forward. Listen, here, here's the bottom line. I, I am being very direct with you. I'm not pulling punches. I'm not hiding anything. I will be pursuing investors for a for-profit media network. Uh, some of those investors, uh, for whatever reason, might want to be silent investors. Um, just off the top of my head, when I was at TYT, uh, I interviewed someone, a, a viewer uh, wanted to pay off her student loan, and he wanted to be anonymous. So Jenk did the segment, and we didn't review a name. I've, I've, I've been speaking to a few people um, that aren't going to be dropping like, you know, $20 million per se, but might want to invest small amounts, this and that, but they might not want it out there for whatever reason. Uh, that happens in companies, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say, no, I won't take your money, but if I have large investment that you will know who is investing, trust me. Uh, I also think, I mean, the bottom line is you either know me, you don't. I'm not looking and I won't accept investment from certain corners of the oligarchy, certain corners of the revolving door, um, just to get this thing launched. Because, yeah, in theory, let's say Charles Koch wants to drop $20 million on me with no strings attached, no editorial control. Uh, theoretically, I could take that money to then fight Charles Koch. But I don't know. It's a p big part of me would feel pretty damn dirty about taking Coke money, even if I was using it for good reasons. So I won't be doing that. And if you question that, if you question, you know, my intentions, uh, I say follow my actions because for the last two years, I haven't been covering Trump 24-7, which, by the way, would have grown the YouTube channel I had for TYT, TYT Politics, faster if I would have just done the obvious and did Trump 24 seven during the campaign, I mean, I probably would have, and we, and honestly, we grew fast anyway. TYT politics, the first year I was there grew faster than any other channel the company ever had. So not only did I show you don't have to be a, a hysterical 24 seven Trump ite, but the point is my actions have shown you, I hope, that this isn't some mad dash uh, money scheme for me. I'm not going to be getting, you know, uh, David Brock's not going to be investing to my company because I don't want to be in the same room with David Brock unless I'm politely harassing him, nonviolently. So that's what's going on. Uh, that's why I end the truth against the machine. It, there's nothing sinister. Uh, there's, not, there's nothing sinister. There, there's, it's simple. It's simply, it was a nonprofit. I wasn't. It, it was launched. I, contrary to some suggestions, I, I really wasn't involved. I think I might have done three total, three or four written articles, and maybe I could count three or four videos. The rest was me mentoring people. But that was one stage of, uh, that was one stage. And now we're moving to what I consider and what I call, not because I want to be cheesy and have a bumper sticker, but I truly think it's necessary a media revolution. That's what's needed. And it's going to come out in steps. I wish I could launch a company tomorrow. I wish I had the money to do that. But I also want to make it very clear to you why, why your help is needed. Because I've seen some comments, oh, Jordan, you're like, uh, you're like a telemarketer online, you know, stop asking people for the money. Here's why it's not just your, it's not just money that we need. Particularly, 
to actually give you what you want and I think people need, which is in the field reporting on the front lines of the disappearing middle class, on the front lines on the war on poverty, on the front lines of environmental genocide, on the front lines of an epidemic of police brutality, on the front lines of real democracy being under attack. You probably have no idea of all the ballot measures that people have voted for, that people have voted for that state legislatures have then overturned. What about that attack on democracy? So it's expensive. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. From the flights to the rent cars to the hotels to food to, uh, to equipment. I mean, I remember Ty and I did a town hall in Flint, Michigan last year. And just the costs for that town hall in a church were thousands of dollars of last minute costs. Techni techni technically, uh, for te technological things. So it's not cheap to do it right. It's not cheap. But there will be transparency. You will know that I am not, you will not, you will know and see that I am not dining out on your funds uh, to go to Wolfgang Steakhouse. I'm more of a sizzler kind of guy anyway.